اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقتدن من لسانی یفقہو قولی Then in verse 63, we say how angry Allah was at the Bani Israel for not following the commands of the Torah, which they had under an oath promised to follow. Now look at ourselves. We too are Muslims because of a covenant. What covenant is that? The covenant of La ilaha illallah. If we fulfill this covenant, we have to follow the Quran, the word of Allah. But do we follow it that way? We do not realize that Allah must be angry at us too. But still, in His infinite grace and mercy, He is tolerating it and still giving us chances upon chances. Then in verse 65 and 66, we are again told about a negative reaction towards the injunctions of the Sharia or the commandments of Allah which brought a dreadful punishment on people in the past. This is tampering with injunctions in such a way that you keep the structure intact, but it finishes the essence. And this is like when you play a game with someone or a trick, or it's like you cheat someone. Now let's bring small examples from our own lives when we do the same. For example, I have heard this practice from some people that when they go abroad, they eat stuff made from chicken or beef very conveniently. And when, as we all know, that is not halal. And they say that you are allowed to eat it by just reading Bismillah on it. Now, where has this fatwa come from for something which has been made totally haram in the Quran? The only relaxation is that if one is in a place where there is simply no other option, like, you know, one is lost somewhere and there's a fear that one may die of hunger, then you can eat whether haram or murdar to save your life. And in that case too, only that much which is barely enough for survival. How can you fit this relaxation in a situation where there is always an option, where you are eating for layer because you can't resist eating chicken or meat? And, you know, justify by saying that it's fine. I eat it by reading Bismillah on it. Then another example is that when women don't cover, the most common excuse that they give is, that my husband doesn't let me, he doesn't allow me to wear hijab or wear the scarf or cover my head. Well, they have the power to convince their husbands gradually with love for every other issue in life. But this is an issue on which husbands never seem to compromise. This might be true in 1% of the case, but 99%, it is because they are so fond of dressing up and looking good that they don't feel like. You see, all of us have weaknesses. And if we have such a weakness, we can admit that, yes, I fall short there. And I will try and pray to Allah to give me the ability, the tawfiq. But the attitude that you start convincing people by self-created logic that what I'm doing is right. And this is a deadly trait. It's a satanic trait. The shaitan uh, also did the same. That he tried to justify what he, what he did wrong with logic. And the sharia has no room for such logics. Then everyone knows well that wine has been made haram for the Muslim ummah. But people come up with ridiculous logics that where has the word haram been used for wine in the Quran. Hence, it is okay to have it. Now, words that are much more intense than this have been used. It says it is filth, it is amal shaitan, a deed that is one of the deeds of the shaitan. Can such a thing be halal? Then what about the great number of ahadiths which clearly proclaim uh, the wine to be haram? Do they carry no weight for us? Then in houses, we conveniently adorn them with 
pictures and statues and the explanation we are given is that you know we are not worshiping them they are just there for decoration allah never said that people you can put them if you do not have the intention to worship them no it's just that whatever the case you cannot put them you are not allowed to put them or pictures whether drawn by hand or taken from a camera all are haram prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never specified the mode of making the picture it was just that the image or picture is not allowed now instead of getting into debates just open up the sahi of bukhari and research for yourself and then you will get the answer clearly in the verses we did at the end of the previous lecture various attitudes of the bani israel towards the book of allah were being discussed one of those attitudes was as mentioned in verse 63 an outright refusal that no the injunctions of the sharia are too difficult we cannot obey them and then the second attitude as mentioned in verse 65 tampering and tricking the injunctions in such a way that your vested interest is not harmed and the apparent structure of deen is intact as well like the people of the sabbath did now in the verses with which we will start now show yet another attitude towards allah's word it says verse 67 remember the incident when musa said to his people allah commands you to sacrifice a cow they replied do you ridicule us musa answered i seek the protection of allah from being one of the ignorant now the bani israel were commanded to sacrifice a cow in order to rid them of the sanctity of the cow which they had adopted from the pagan nations around them when they were in egypt and it was a test of their faith that if they really believed in allah as their only deity and did not make anyone or anything else the object of their worship they should break the idol of their former worship with their own hands but this proved to be a very hard test they tried to avoid the sacrifice because their belief was of a very weak nature they went on asking detail after detail in order to put it off and this is a proven fact that when someone does not intend or cannot bring oneself to obey something then he tries to delay this obedience by negative tactics what we call in our language hujjat bazi Uh, their first spontaneous reaction was that they asked Musa alayhi salam that are you joking that we sacrifice the cow the cow for which we have so much love and so much reverence in our hearts huzwa is that joke which is against rationality a senseless joke and in response to this Musa alayhi salam said a'uzu billahi an akuna minal jahilin that I seek the protection of Allah from being one of the ignorant. Now this answer of Musa alayhi salam shows that only the ignorant, the jahil indulge in making fun of someone. You see actually there are two kinds of joking. One is called mazah and that is to say something in such a way that causes the listener to smile or to laugh and no one is humiliated or laughed at or made fun of. And this a uh, type of joking is commendable and there is no haram in doing that but to make fun of someone to ridicule someone this work is done by people who are ignorant or what we call jahil not in the sense that they are not educated but in the sense that they lack moral values verse 68 request your rab they said to give us some details of that cow musa alayhi salam replied allah says the cow should neither be too old or too young but of middle age do therefore what you are commanded now as they ask <coughs> musa alayhi salam to ask allah subhanahu wa taala that what kind of a cow should they sacrifice the reason why this question was asked was due to reluctance in obedience if a person is you know bent upon obedience he is determined to obey then he will not ask such questions but the one who wants to delay obedience he wants to gain time uh, till it becomes the last option he asks such questions 
Now we find that Allah is still patient with them and does not show displeasure, but replied that sacrifice a cow which is of middle age, neither too young nor too old. But the end of the verse we find that Musa salam gives them advice and say that now do what you have been commanded to do, meaning that now do not waste any more time with further such questions. Verse 69. Request your Rabb again, they said, to clarify for us her color. Musa salam replied, Allah says, The said cow should be of a rich and deep yellow color, pleasing to the eyes. Now it seems that these people are in a mood of ridiculing or making fun of this command of Allah. And despite the fact that they have been stopped from asking irrelevant details and questions, they ask that now ask your Rabb that of what color the cow should be. Now Musa salam ignores their irrational attitude and says that get a cow of a deep yellow color which is pleasant to look at. Because he does not want to indulge in an argument with them. Verse 70, again they said, request your Rabb to clarify for us the exact type of cow she should be. For us, all cows look alike. If Allah wills, we shall be rightly guided. So the curiosity continues. It did not finish. And they wanted further clarification about the cow. They said, that we are still not able to understand what sort of a sacrifice Allah wants from us. Now the question was not due to lack of understanding, but it was due to the reluctance in the heart. And this happens that sometimes things come in a person's comprehension as far as intellect and logic is concerned, but the heart does not agree to it. The heart is not prepared to act upon it. And when the heart is convinced, then any negative propaganda, any logic, nothing can stop a person from doing what he wants to do. Now, what is the usual answer given when someone is doing something ununderstandable and asked, why are you doing it? They say, because my heart wants to do it. And... In the end, they say that if we get more details, then we will inshallah do what Allah wants. Now, regarding this particular verse, Hazrat Abu Huraira Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu says that if they had not said inshallah, they would not have found what they wanted to till the Qiyamah. Verse 71, Musa salam replied, Allah says, The said cow should have neither been used to till the soil nor water the fields, a healthy one, free from any blemish. Now you have brought us the accurate description, they said. Then they slaughtered her after they had nearly declined. They had almost given up. When the answer came and the answer given to them is that the cow should not be of a kind who has become worn out or haggard due to working hard in the fields. Nor should she be the one to water the fields, but a healthy and a fresh one. All its energies are intact and it should have no defect in it. For example, what are the small defects in such animals that they have no cut, no wound or injury, all their bones and teeth should be in perfect condition and its color should be also in one tone, no mixture of another shade or any other color. Now that the Bani Israel could not think of any more questions, so they finally surrendered that now we got it, now we finally understand what you want then what happened that they eventually found such a cow in some historical details we are told that the cow they found according to the description was very expensive the person who sold this cow to them said that its price would be that after it has been slaughtered and the skin has been separated then we will take as much gold coins that would fit in its skin as its price. 
The end of the verse tells us that they did not want to do the sacrifice, but they had to do it when all the requirements were met. Now this shows that when you get to know a simple and easy command from Allah, then obey it as it is. Avoid questioning it too much because when too many questions are asked, deen becomes difficult, obedience becomes difficult and one cannot act on it. There is a hadith, the gist of which is that do not bring hardship on yourself, otherwise hardship will be brought upon you. Meaning that don't ask such dissecting questions regarding injunctions of the deen because of which you will be uh, bound to get into problems while obeying it. And you see, one thing is that the concept is not clear. Then there is no harm clarifying those concepts because unless and until the basic concepts are clear, you cannot follow deen. But another thing is, that simple commandments because you see deen comprises of two things concepts and commandments when it comes to simple commandments then that becomes too difficult to follow if too many questions are asked the thing that is condemned is that you make a thing difficult by cross-questioning that commandment. For example, there is a simple command to do wazu for salat. And its procedure has been explained clearly in the sunnah. Now, what if someone asks, can we do wazu in the bathroom? Should we do it while sitting or standing? Should we be facing towards the qibla? Should we do it with the tap water or with a container? If someone says that it is better to do it from a container, then asking uh, what should the container be made of, metal or mud? Can we do wazoo with warm water in winter or cold water has to be used? And such questions are asked from fukaha, who are fukaha, the jurists. And they give decisive, solid answers, taking into consideration many factors. And hence, something as simple as wazoo becomes a complicated exercise, which becomes hard to continue. Sometimes by compiling the answers given by the jurists regarding these questions, such a difficult formula of deen comes out that as a result, people start running away from deen. Verse 72 And remember another incident. When you killed a man and started disputing as to who killed him, Allah made it known what you concealed. Verse 73 so we said, strike the dead body with a piece of the slaughtered cow. That's how Allah brought the dead to life to show you his signs so that you may understand his power to restore life. Now the verse shows that along with the incident of the slaughter of the cow, another incident took place simultaneously in the Bani Israel. A person had murdered someone and in order to hide the crime, he and his supporters began accusing different people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to expose the criminal. And by means of a miracle, he was exposed to everyone. Most of the tafasir do not give the reason why this murder was done. Because it might be from a weak source and also because that this information is not required. The few tafasir that give the reason is that a man belonging to the Bani Israel was interested in marrying a girl. But her father was against this proposal and in his rage to this rejection, the man killed the girl's father and after that he hid himself somewhere. The Bani Israel came to Musa salam and requested him to help them in tracing the culprit. And then by the will and command of Allah, this incident took place. Now, according to the divine plan, the way of identifying the culprit was that a part of the flesh of the cow that had just been sacrificed should be touched with a part of the flesh of the dead man. 
By doing this, the dead man would come back to life again and tell the details of his murder. And then the murderer, uh, the murder and the murderer, and then he is going to die again. Now, we are not told which part of the cow was used as this matter does not benefit us either in matters of life or religion. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have made it clear for us. Allah made this matter vague. So this is why we should leave it vague. Thus they struck him with it and he came to life again. And this verse demonstrates Allah's ability in bringing the dead back to life. Allah made this incident a proof against the Jews that the resurrection shall occur and ended their disputing and stubbornness over the dead person. Verse 74, but even after seeing that, your hearts became hard like a rock or even harder, for there are some rocks from which rivers gush out and there are some which break asunder and water comes out of them and there are some which fall down with the fear of Allah and Allah is not unaware of what you do. Now we can see for ourselves in this surah that the Bani Israel were a nation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly tried to reform sometimes by excessive favors, sometimes by excessive trials, punishments, forgivenesses, but nothing affected their hearts. Even open miracles could not teach them anything. The experiences which they had to undergo were so unusual that they were enough to make an ordinary person humble and obedient. But on the contrary, the hearts of this nation became even more hardened. They became more prone to oppose divine guidance and their transgressions instead of decreasing kept on increasing day by day. They became more and more stubborn and persistent in their ways with not even a slight inclination to change. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the state of their, their hearts, that their hearts are harder than the stones even. We are told about the three categories of stones. Number one is that category that water gushes out from them. As we have seen in areas of Gilgit, Naran, Kagan, and Kashmir that water flows gushingly along the sides of a mountain and if the source of that water is located it is from uh, from some hard rock of the mountain the second kind is those stones out of which streams don't gush forth but still water comes out of them not with the same in intensity but slowly in a peaceful tranquil way and the third kind of stones are that out of which no water comes out but they fall down or they roll down a mountain the ones we see in a form of a landslide now this is a beautiful verse in which stones are being compared to hum human beings the first kind of stone as we have just discussed are those out of which streams gush out this is the state of those kind of people who were in the state of heedlessness and finally when they caught the tawfiq to understand the truth, they got to know about Allah in the real sense. The hearts of the seemingly tough people melted. And a sign of this is that when they listen to the verses of the Quran, tears roll down from their eyes. The hardness of their hearts has cracked and now springs are coming out of it. And the category is such that other people are also benefiting from these gushing springs. This water is nurturing greenery and beauty everywhere it goes. It's a source of benefit and advantage for so many people. People. Then the second kind of stone is which was somewhat um, hardened than the first one and because of an earthquake it cracked and some water came out of it. We find that whenever there are wells of oil or minerals, first of all an earthquake comes that cracks the earth and then the treasure comes out. Its example is of those people who were hard-hearted initially. But such a calamity, such a disaster came in their lives that it literally shook them. Then their hearts melted and cracked and khair came out of them. And the third category of stone is the one which is the hardest of all. The heart of this kind is the one which is brimming over with pride and arrogance and the sense of his own greatness overwhelms him so much that he treats all those around him with contempt but like the rock when Allah's greatness entered his heart 
at some stage in his life what is this greatness it is called khashiyat it is not fear but awe of allah the realization of his majesty and excellence and he in his uh, own inferiority rolled down he fell down with this awe from the top to the bottom but the hearts of the bani israel belong to none of these categories actually the hardening of the heart is the most awful thing that can happen to a person and we must seek allah's refuge against it wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin